I want to talk about the wording that I titled this talk, A Painless Introduction to Jazz and Improvisation. This is truly an introduction, okay? Jazz and improvisation are very wide, large topics with lots of different elements, okay? There's no way we can talk about it all in one night. I mean, there are people that have been talking about jazz for decades. If you know the guys like Phil Schapp, who right now teaches in Juilliard, he's been talking about it for decades, and it's still more to talk about. Now, the word painless, there's a reason I put that in, and the best way to illustrate it is to hear a definition of jazz from the internet. One, please. Um, jazz is defined as a style of music native to America, characterized by a strong but flexible rhythmic understructure with solo and ensemble impro improvisation on basic tune and chord pattern, and more recently, a highly sophisticated harmonic pattern. Now, did anybody understand that? Because I didn't, <laughs> all right? <laughs> now, read, read where it's from. Um, Classicsforkids.com. It's a children's website, okay? That was the way that they wanted to explain jazz to children. And here, here lies the problem, okay? It's considered something that's too complex than it really needs to be. So what I want to do is I want to start with a couple of absolutes about jazz. Jazz is not music for the intellectual or the elite few, okay? Jazz came from the people. It came from the blues. The blues came from the, the pain and the suffering of the slave, okay? It wasn't done in academia or in a university. So it's something that anybody can listen to. It's not played by a, you know, some sort of advanced musician that's better than somebody else. A, a, a musician is a musician. Music is music, okay? Just because you play jazz doesn't mean you're better than somebody else. That's something I really have to emphasize because I get that a lot from players, from students, from non-musicians, right? What is jazz? Jazz is the only true American music, all right? And as, and as Americans, we should want to preserve that. It's a very diverse music, has many different types and comes from many different places. It can be understood and played by any level of musician. Um, we can break most jazz, and I say most because there are always examples and always exceptions, between two, the backbone of two things. The first is the swing feel, okay? The swing feel is a rhythmic interpretation, all right? And the other one is improvisation to some degree. Now, and if I, if I take my bass out and I do a scale, I'm going to do a scale in straight eighth notes, all right? swing without the, em the emphasis. Right? Now with the emphasis. Alright? So it's not only is it that loped feel, but it's that emphasis on two and four. Now that swing is heard in the melody. It's the driving force in the rhythm section, and it's in the solos to some extent. And I say that to some extent because the soloist has much more freedom to do it as, as he or she pleases. To me, improv is uh, it's just another way of soloing, but within time, rhythm, and obviously in key. Okay, anybody else? Or making something up as you go along. Okay, good. No? I think, I think it's a playing with the feeling, running on time, mm -hmm. with harmony. The yeah, harmony. yeah. Yes, improvisation basically is making your own melody, whether it be over a set of structured chords or, a, or, or, you know, or, free, or freely without structured chords. It's your <laughs> own melody as opposed to somebody else's. It's as old as music. Improvisation is ancient music was improvised, folk music. Nobody, you know, there were no, you know, people in, uh, in ancient civilizations. Oh, you got the chart for that, you know, folk tune? No, they, it was oral tradition. It came from father to son, mother to daughter. Okay, and it's not necessarily a solo. Improvisation doesn't have to be a solo. You can have an ensemble that improvises freely. That's true. All right. So it's just your own. All right. Uh, Ivan. In jazz, we recognize for the first time the decisive fact that the personality of the performing musician is more important than the material contributed by the composer. All right. This 
This alone is the thing that musicians find most terrifying. Okay? If Ivan is playing, nobody cares what he what what the song is, nobody cares what the um who the composer was. Who do they care about? Uh, Ivan. Yeah. But Ivan now, not Ivan tomorrow, not Ivan yesterday. It's Ivan now, meaning is Ivan tired? Is he hot? Is he cold? Is he mad? Right? Is he happy? Is he hungry? Is he full? Everything that Ivan is right this minute. All right? Whereas in, say, Western music or classical music or even popular music, the composer's interpretation is what's important. In improvisation and in jazz or any improvisation, that's the last thing you want to know about. And in, and in jazz, it can be done over, like we talked about standard tunes. You may have heard people talk about real book tunes. They're standard uh, tunes of the American songbook that you can use as part of your improvisation. Solo should be a journey. It should have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And if you think of it like a movie, think about movies that you've liked and that you haven't liked. Oh, it was too slow in the beginning. Oh, it was all action and I got bored. You have to think about your solo that way. It's got to have all the aspects of a story, whether it be a structured solo or whether it be a totally free improvisation. So having said that, my last thing I talk about are tools of expression. And these are the things I was just saying. Dynamics, crescendo, space, quiet, peaks and valleys. The things that make anything worth listening to. We've all had teachers in our school that were monotone. Nothing worse, right? Mm -hmm. If a solo was just like, it's like after a while, it's like, oh, okay. But it's the whole idea where you can sit there and you can play and it's like, you know. Right, it's ups and downs. I'm holding a couple of notes. I'm shutting up for a while. It's not patterns, it's knowing the notes. In this case, it's only five. You know, it gets more complex, let's mm -hmm. be honest. But it's knowing those five notes all over the board. Anyone who studied with me knows I talk notes, I do not talk patterns. Knowing the notes, knowing what the music does for you, all right, in your ear, on paper, you know, the whole thing, and making your own music, making your music, your music. That's the deal. I don't want to hear Marcus Miller. I don't want to hear Jaco Pastorius. I don't want to hear Charlie Parker. I don't want to hear Pepper Adams. I don't want to hear Cecil Taylor. I want to hear you. Now those people may have made up, made you up, you know, made up some of the things you hear, but I don't want to hear them. They're they're there or they're dead or whatever. You guys are more important. Why? Because who's got the bass on their lap right now? Who's got the instrument on their lap? That's the deal. Any questions? All right, I want to thank you for coming. All right. I hope I hope, uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you spurned you some uh, interest in uh, learning about jazz and improvisation. And have a good night. Thank you.